Hi, my name is Kevin and I'm with Easy Generator Switch and today we are going to show you how to tie into an existing emergency on off switch. This unit happens to be a gas fired Bedaris burner and we will put our Easy Generator Switch mounted alongside of this existing box and tie into this system so it will be ready in case of an outage. So we'll walk you through this one step at a time. I've got everything shut off. That's the most important thing. Not only, not just the switch, but I'm off at the circuit breaker panel for safety reasons. So there's absolutely no power at this box at all. You need to be very aware of that. Uh, first thing we want to do is open it up and let's, let's see what we have. Um, this is the first time I'm opening up, so it's a, it, I'm being educated just like you are at the same time. Uh, what I find in here is there is the feed coming from the panel. Okay. I've got a feed coming from the panel going right straight to the switch. Okay, it's going right to the switch. And from the switch, it's feeding two different items. It's feeding the furnace, and it's also feeding another set of controls further down that is part of this unit. So what we'll need to do is uh, separate the feeds and the neutrals coming from the panel. So our first, our first item is to take the feed right there from the panel off of this switch. So we're going to take that off. We know that's the feed. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is find the feed from the panel in the way of a neutral. It's not truly a, a feed, but we want to make sure we identify which neutrals or which. So we're going to open this up. I'm in an awkward position here, so uh, just bear with us. There is the neutral coming from the panel. So there's my hot leg and my neutral, and I've separated those. These are the neutrals I can put back together. They're, one is going to the Bedaris furnace, and one is going to controls. And you may have this and you may not, but if you don't, just disregard the control end of it. You, you don't, don't lose any sleep over it. The next thing I want to do is I want to make a knockout in our box, in this existing box, so we can attach our generator switch box to it. So I'm just going to drive one of the knockouts out, like that, pull it out with a pair of pliers. And uh, what I have is a offset nipple. They're, they're very inexpensive. We've used them on our other videos. It, they make the connection from box to box very simple. So it just goes in the, knock, in the knockout and you put your uh, lock nut on it. That's all I'm doing right here. Just lets me get the connection between the two. I'm going to put that on a little loose because I'm going to have to move that around a little bit. Okay, the next thing I want to do is take our Easy Generator Switch and I've got to open it up and it comes shipped with the ground connected in the bottom and I'm just, all I'm doing is taking that out. That's all I've done is re release the ground off of that ground screw right there. I need the box so I can mount it. So I'm going to take this box, I've got a knockout in it already, and I'm going to take this box and put it on the other end of the offset nipple. I, that makes my connection pretty easy. That lets me go from the easy generator switch to our connections in this existing emergency box. We don't want to make connections in the generator switch box. There's no reason to. We want to stay out of it. So what I'm going to do is, and this is all pre-wired, is all I'm going to do here is take my wiring, slide it up through this offset nipple. Now I haven't connected this box. Okay, you should really, that box should be connected. I'm doing this to show you how to make the connections. So I'm going to slide these wires up in here. And there we go. Nice and easy. Once you have those up in, in there, the next thing you want to do is you want to connect this ground back up again to our box. All right. 
So I'm going to put this ground back on in this box. I'm going to get my fingers in here. It's a little tight, but that's probably the worst part of the job is just trying to get your hands in these boxes to make your connections. Okay. I've got that ground on. I've got that ground on in there. And that really is all you have to do inside of our switch box. Take these screws out. Again, I apologize for the tight quarters, but this is what we were given to work with. <laughs> all right, so we've got that switch in there. I'm gonna close up our generator switch. There's nothing else we need to do. We only open that box to, so we can fish our wires through that nipple. this other screw back in and this would be the same for you at home it'd be the exact same setup um, you may be you may find your emergency switch you're in a basement and it's mounted to the bottom of a rafter and uh, and that's fine too it doesn't matter where this switch is you just want to be alongside of it now I've got this I've got this mounted uh, vertically and that, that's how you want to keep it if you have a a, an emergency off box that's on the bottom of a rafter. Don't mount our box on the bottom of a rafter because when you go to plug in, it'll constantly be falling out when you're trying to run. So you want to you want to mount it flat like this anytime you can. And this could get mounted right to the side of a furnace. If you're going to mount this to the side of a furnace, don't use long screws. The side of a furnace is just a, a thin metal, and you want to use a short sheet metal screw. Maybe drill, pre-drill a hole, don't go in too far, and just, just get in through the sheet metal, and then secure your box at that point. Okay, this box is done. Our easy generator switch is mounted. Um, this part of it's done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take all wires from our easy generator switch, comprised of a ground, a feed in, a feed out, and two neutrals. The neutrals are marked line and load. The line, let's deal with the line neutral first. The line neutral, and it's marked. That line neutral needs to go to the line coming in from the panel. That's why we call it a line neutral. Let me get this out of the way here a little bit so you can see. Okay, I have the line neutral in my hand. This is the, this is the neutral coming from the panel. So what we want to do is we want to connect these two. Our wires are pre-skinned, and all you really need to do is pull the ends off. If you need to shorten them, that's fine. So we're going to connect these two. Like that. And the wire nuts that are supplied, right there. That takes care of one right off the bat. Let's see if we can tuck this a little bit out of our way so you can see what I'm doing. Make a little bit more room. Okay. The next neutral we want to deal with is the neutral load. And the other two wires that were left when I opened that up, when I opened that neutral splice, the load is the Bedaris unit above me, and it also happens to be a neutral going out to the control circuit. So we're going to take that neutral load, Again, we're skinned. You just pull them off. And we will use the neutral load and tie it onto the load that goes out. Try to get a full turn on that at all times. Put a wire net on it that's supplied. Tuck it away. We get that thing tucked away somewhere. Okay, so we're left with, we, we've got three wires left. A ground, our red is our line in, and our black from our easy generator switch is the load. So let's, let's deal with the red, that's our line in. Here's the line coming from the panel, the feed coming from the circuit breaker, which is off.
we're going to take our red line coming in and get it spliced onto the feed coming in. Get a good wrap on it. Wire nut. And the same thing, tuck it away. All right. Got two left. We got a ground and we have our load. Our black is our load. We're going to take this black and we're going to put it around the screw for the switch where we took the line off because that's now our load. This switch is still part of the system. We don't want to eliminate your emergency switch. There's no reason to eliminate that. Let's get some of this tucked away. Okay. Now, we kind of lucked out. We've got, we've got some grounds here. What we can do with this ground is we can skin this ground. I'm leaving these long for right now. Normally I wouldn't leave this much slack, but I'm doing it for a different reason. You don't need to do that. You don't need to try to lose all this slack. You're welcome to trim them back. So what I'm going to do is take this ground and I'm going to incorporate it into this existing ground that's here. I know I'm in a difficult spot. I hope you can see this pretty good. I know our cam cameraman's doing the best he can. I have nowhere to move over, I'm sorry. Okay, we got our grounds connected. So this, this is done. Our grounds are connected. Now, what I want to do is take these screws out. And with a little bit of luck, like I said, you do not have to keep all of this wiring in here. You're welcome to shorten it up. We leave it long enough, so if you didn't want to use an offset nipple and you wanted to use a, you know, a 12 inch piece of half inch pipe or a piece of three quarter pipe, but it gives you some more room to work with. Okay, so we're going to put this back together. And uh, wrap this up. So you can see I've left I've left your emergency switch. You don't want to take your emergency emergency on off switch out of the out of the equation. Just leave it in there. What we want to do is we managed to get we managed to get uh, in front of it. You and it's not it's not necessarily that important whether you whether you mount electrically whether you make our generator switch in front of this or electrically behind it but we just don't want to eliminate it from the circuit we want to always have use of that emergency switch so if we were to go turn our power back on turn that back up and this is in the normal mode right here this system will work when we lose power in this particular instance all we need to do is come in here plug in to our inlet and go to the generator position. We don't do anything else. We don't have to touch the circuit breakers. We don't have to throw the switch. We don't do anything else. It's like nothing else exists. So you're in the normal mode. You lose power. Take your extension cord, plug it in, hit generator. Uh, we will put this up on the uh, website and you are welcome to visit us at uh, easygeneratorswitch.com. If you got questions, certainly you can ask us right on either Facebook or you can ask us on our website. I'd be happy to answer them. And uh, there'll be more pictures posted of people that have done similar installations on the website. I hope this helps and uh, have a great day. And certainly have questions, send them to us. We'll be happy to answer them. Thanks. Have a great day.